honor. Well, if you would open your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. 2 Kings chapter 3. So that we can hear the word of the Lord for this day and this hour. I want to talk today about the journey to the top. And it is a journey, and you need to enjoy yourself on the journey, the journey to the top. Now, just by saying the journey to the top, it, 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 that tells us that you don't ever start off on top. The only place that you start off on top is when you're digging a hole. We're going to talk about that today, the journey to the top. Uh, in the uh, third chapter of the book of 2 Kings, 2 Kings chapter 3. Let's begin here with verse 10. Verse 10, 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 10. And the king of Israel said, Alas, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of the Lord by him? So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Shaphat, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And then Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, No, for the Lord has called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I would not look at you nor see you. But now bring me a musician. And then it happened that when the musician played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus says the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet the valley shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animals may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hands. Also you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every spring of water and ruin every good piece of land with stones. And now it happened in the morning that when the grain offering was offered that suddenly water came by way of Edom and the land was filled with water. The journey to the top. It doesn't start off as an exciting journey, but on that journey, I pray that your journey will always begin with a quest of asking, is there a word from the Lord? If you ever get a word from God, just one word from God can change your life. Just one word from God can literally begin to turn you. And what you turn to is always greater than what you turn from. Don't, don't, don't ever worry about it that when I'm, I'm getting ready to go to something else now, if you are not convinced that what you're going to is greater than where you're coming from, then you need to stay where you are. I mean, don't, don't, don't give it up unless you're going up. And you have to give up in order to go up. But there is a journey that we make on our way to the top. But you must do that first at the voice of the Lord. And, and, there, and there's a great message here that I, be, I believe that begins to tell us about a modality 
through which we can achieve some of the things that he's talking about. Notice that when they even went to the prophet Elisha, these three kings, because they were convinced that Moab was going to take advantage of them and, and conquer all three of them. They were three in, in a fearing that one nation was going to destroy them. And they went to seek out Elisha the prophet. And Elisha, before he did anything, he said, get me a musician because I need to hear music for my prophetic gift to be stirred up. He was saying in essence that I need to create an atmosphere for the glory of God. Bring me a minstrel. May I just remind you that you cannot get to the top by yourself. We are not designed to get there by ourselves. God is, is, is uh, designed to have somebody that you call into your life to actually help you to celebrate him. Uh, do you know the Bible says, come magnify the Lord with me? Let us exalt his name together? Let's, let's do this thing together because if you know anything about magnification, it's a, a 1x or 2x and this, that happens to be 1,000, not just 1 because anything times 1 is the same old thing. And I refuse to have people in my life that are like zeros that add nothing to me. And you, you know, you need somebody, if you can just get one other person, somebody that adds to you, at least now two qualifies for multiplication. I can't even multiply by myself. If you just bring me a musician and just let somebody help me set the atmosphere, I mean, then I am qualifying myself for my journey. You can't do this thing by yourself. John Doan was right when he said that no man is an island unto himself. We need one another. You need somebody somebody else to come on magnify the Lord with me because I can't magnify anything by myself it'll be the same size but if two of us lift our voices God says wherever there are two you will come into the qualification of God coming in he says there will I be in the midst if I can just get one other person stop trying to do it all by yourself you're not if you are the only one hearing this thing maybe it's not from God because God will send you confirmation of somebody else in the earth that is here what God is saying to you we need when he asked for a musician you know what that is normally called we call that accompaniment accompaniment who do you have in your life that is accompanying you if you're trying to do it all by yourself and if you can do it by yourself you are not big enough God let me tell you Jesus without exception always sent them out by two always by two always by two when God called the animals into the ark he called them not by one he called them by by two because you don't have the power to multiply until you get at least two it's not that man is so good man was inept by himself until God took out of him and made two and now he has the power to come into multiplication for so long, it's just been the man of God, the man of God, the man of God. Now, it is a day where the woman of God is being brought beside the man of God. And now we've got the ability to multiply like we have never been able to multiply again. Why would I dare become intimidated by what is in my life to help me to multiply and to grow? Bring me a musician and let him accompany me so that something can begin to lift me from the place where I am and get me out of fear because I'm walking with three kings that's scared that we're going to be beat up by one person who's awesome. But when you get an accompaniment, music changes the atmosphere and the atmosphere became changed. So they summoned for musicians to come. And then notice something unique happened. When they did get the word of the Lord, the Lord said, I want you to take this valley where you are. When you're in a valley, you're in a low place. A valley is a low place in between mountains. You can see the mountain but can't get there. You ever been in a place where you could see what you wanted but couldn't get there? You're so close but yet you're so far? Have you ever been in a situation where you felt something greater in you than what was currently being manifested in your life? Have you ever felt that you were in one place but somehow you feel uncomfortable that I don't belong here? That I, 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 somehow I feel that I was not designed to live the way that I'm living right now? And now down in a valley, in a valley, 
Now listen, it's an odd word that came from God. An odd word. This odd word says to you, you're already in a valley. God didn't say, I want you now to see if you can get an escalator or an elevator and go to the top. The word of the Lord came to them, talking to people in a valley, and said, make this valley full of ditches. You're already low, now you're getting ready to go lower. I want you to start digging. You'll never, ever start digging until you get thirsty. And there are some folks that's in the valley, and they'll never make the valley full of ditches until they start digging. May I just remind you today that whenever a farmer is in a valley, he begins to take what he has, which is seed, but his seed is no good if he won't dig. Maybe what you ought to sculpt out is a place to place seed. Maybe you're supposed to put an idea there. While you're already down, he said, he said, I want you to make ditches, make this valley full of ditches. That's all that a farmer does. He makes his land full of ditches because God is getting ready to give them a harvest like they've never had before. May I tell you something? Say the word humble. See, the way, to, the, the way to go up is to first go down. If my people which are called by my name would humble themselves. He didn't say if they try to climb to the top, finagle, try to hot knob, try to get with people that's already on the top. He said, if my people, Second Chronicles 7, 14, which are called by my name, would humble themselves, humble themselves. The very first thing before God says, I can even help you, God says, I've got to put you into a place of humility. Humility, humility. Say humble again. Humble. May I tell you that humble is the word humus. It comes from the word humus. 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 H-U-M-U-S. Humus. That means dust or dirt. It means that God will get you in a valley and make you eat dirt. You don't understand that sometime before God can get you to the top, that you got to be brought to the bottom and you got to eat dirt. Humble is about eating dirt. Isn't it something that maybe the reason that God wants us to eat dirt is because he's got a seed in us. And something is getting ready to grow in us. And I don't know whether ever any of you all have ever hit rock bottom and you lost everything that you had, but yet new life began to grow out of you. You were already abiding in death, but because God put you in a position where you had to have somebody else, you had to eat at somebody else's table. You had to have somebody else to pay your light bill, your gas bill. You had to sleep on their couch. You didn't even have your own stuff. But it was in that place of brokenness that God changed your life. It was in the time where you were eating dirt. You were in the humus, and you were humble down to the ground. And yet, God was changing your heart. He was doing something down here that he couldn't get done up there. And he'll just have you to humble yourself and to eat dirt. No wonder God said that I want you to get out there and dig some ditches because God says I will take you and embarrass you and bring you down to the dust of the earth so that you won't think that you're all of that and you will let me make you over again into a brand new man and a brand new woman. good but your mouth got awfully dry and somehow it started you to dig in because you were dried out and you had dirt in your mouth you had to eat humble pie you had to prove that your way was not right you were wrong and we had to eat dirt but let me tell you God was not trying to harm you he was only trying to lift you up to a place May I tell you that if you're going to get God to cause you to be on the top and to win the war that you're in, if you're going to win the war, when God tells you to dig ditches, when you really dig ditches, what you're doing when you dig a ditch, are you listening to me? I want somebody to hear the Holy Ghost because God said that my way shall be called a way of holiness. When you really dig a ditch, digging a ditch has everything to do with moving dirt. If you don't learn to move
move some dirt out of the way and push some of the ways of your dirty flesh back and some of the dirty thoughts of your mind back. My God, I'm just telling you that the only reason that the great dragon that's in Revelation, he started out as a serpent in Genesis, but now he's grown into a big dragon is because he's been eating a dust diet because the dust is what man thinks out of his own mind. His dirty thoughts and the devil now begins to feed off of the dust that we have been providing. Instead, God says, I want you to humble yourself. I want you to eat dirt because if you eat dirt, you're going to grow. Dirt causes things to grow. It might look nasty. You might wonder how in the world can God use the filth out of which I came. But I'm just here to tell you, look at the most glorious flower and look at its roots. You'll find it rooted in the dirt. And it's because God had somebody that moved dirt out of the way and said, I'm going to put a seed here in somebody that is dirty. I'm going to put a seed here, something that is pure. I'm going to plant it in something that is dirty. And I'm going to raise out of that a creation of life. I want to talk some revelation in this house today. I want to explode your spirit with revelation. Before you build a house, you have to first dig out a foundation. Don't think you can put something up without going down first. And if I'm going to tell how big and strong the house is going to be, I can always measure that by seeing how deep the foundations have been dug out. And sometimes don't you ever measure by how high you can go by how low you've gone. Maybe God was establishing foundations in your life to build and erect something that would be able to stand the test of time. Maybe he was just getting us ready to dig out a foundation in our life because you've got to always dig for water. Water is the type of the spirit, it's the type of the anointing. And if you ever really want the anointing, you've got to dig for it. You can't just inherit somebody else's anointing. You can't just covet somebody else's anointing. You've got to dig for your own. You've got to eat dirt. You've got to be humble yourself before God. You've got to get in a room and you've got to be able to cry. I mean, where stuff is running out of your eyes and out of your nose and you're not concerned about trying to be cute. But you're just letting God be God and saying, Lord, here I am. Take me just as I am. Love me or hate me, God. But this is everything that I've got. And I present myself to you a living sacrifice. God, here I am. Receive me. God says, dig some ditches. While we got folks trying to build their own throne, God says, dig ditches. Dig, dig ditches. I want you to go down. I want you to make this valley full of ditches. Because if God's going to plant in your life, you got to dig a place for the seed to go. Got to dig a place. Digging is only a starting place to get to the top. Because what goes down that you plant in is then coming up. You sow downward, the roots bear down, but the fruit bears upward. God will bring you up. He'll do one of two things. Either God will bring you up or God will fill you up. He'll either bring you up or God will fill you up. God will bring you. There must be a death before there is a resurrection. God has a way. Uh, since there is a death, one of the reasons that he said... To dig a ditch is because a ditch is a burial place. And he said, I want you to b build a place for some stuff that's not to come back up in your life ever again. May I just give you a prophetic word of the Lord that the Lord spoke to me some time ago and I wrote it down. I felt it so strongly in my spirit for this service particularly. I didn't share this in the early service, but I, I felt impressed of the Holy Ghost. To share this, the Lord said to me, when my people repair the broken down altars of their life, that is the sacrificial time of devotion in prayer and in my word. He says, when they put the wood in order, that is the structure, the support beams of their life, and when they return to the foundations which have been destroyed, then God says, I will send my light, my lightning, and which, when it strikes, it'll touch you and it'll cause you to burn with my fire. 
And he says, my fire shall overshadow and consume your tradition. It'll transcend your structure. It'll dry out your saturation. So that God said, I will stand out in your life. I heard him say that I want to strike my people with burning desire to consume every, everything in the path of their destiny. And you will discover that after your illumination, there will come a great struggle, a great fight. But you're digging some ditches because something must always go down before something can rise up. When you dig your ditch, it is your way of saying, I'm preparing for my miracle. You dig a ditch financially, you have to open up a savings account. You have to open up a vehicle for investment. If you, if you really want God to pour into you, you've got to dig the ditch. You make the place to receive the blessing. You get ready for it. It's, it's your way of exhibiting your faith that, God, I believe something greater is coming. May I just tell you that what God is doing is, is just the same as what Jesus did with his disciples. The Bible says that he took bread and then he blessed it and then he broke it and then he gave it in that order. It's called the order of breaking of bread. Bread comes from the ground where the Bible says that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. If you ever pray for bread, God will never give you bread. God gives you a seed. So you can sow it and he'll grow it. Bread is always the result of process. And then once the bread is there, when Jesus took a little boy's lunch, the two fish and the five barley loaves, the Bible says that he took it and then he blessed it. May I remind you that God has taken you. And now God has blessed you. He's blessed you with salvation. He's blessed you with gifts. He's blessed you with imagination, with creativity, with ideas that you haven't even been able to work out in your own life yet. You are so blessed. You're blessed because you've been taken by God and you've been blessed by God. But after you're blessed by God, the most strange thing happens. You're broken by him. God will allow you to be broken. He'll allow you to hit the ground and eat dust after you are blessed. He bless you with gifts, callings, anointings, and then you'll hit the dirt. He'll close things so that they begin to dry up in your life and you'll be in a valley dried up looking for resource. And you're broken in that place. And the only reason that God will break you is so that the stuff that he has sown in you and matured in you can get out of you and to the world. And after the stage three where you've been broken because you're taken first, you're blessed second, you are broken third. And then the Bible says that he gave. He gave them. Thank you for watching Power for Living with Bishop Dale C. Bronner. Until next time, God bless you.